On this Tobacco University video, I'm going to go over the daily light integral, typically abbreviated DLI, in relation to cannabis yield. So not only will I be discussing this as far as defining it, I'll also provide you with some information on how you can calculate it for your grow area. All right, let's learn a little bit more about the daily light integral. So first off, what is it? Well, the daily light integral, or DLI, represents or describes the total number of photosynthetically active photons in the 400 to 700 nanometers or PAR range that are delivered to a specific area over a 24 hour period. For outdoor locations, this will be season and weather dependent. And for indoor locations, it can more easily be calculated by simply knowing the light's output in the hours that the lights spend in the on position. Again, for our outdoor locations, a little bit more of confusion in the sense that knowing what season, knowing what location, knowing where or what degree of latitude can also impact this. Uh, so we gotta take into account a little bit more for calculating this for an outdoor location. Now, when we're going through that calculation process, uh, DLI is the sum of the per second PPFD, that's photosynthetically photon uh, flux density, measurements during the 24-hour period. If the photosynthetic light intensity remains constant, as with artificial lighting uh, units, for a defined time period, which is a duration, then the DLI can easily be calculated. So you have your lights on for a certain period of time, producing this amount, of PPFD, it makes the calculation step fairly easy. Outdoor locations, as I said, more complicated and require more data collection over a period of time. However, the end result can be the same. We see this kind of calculation of our DLI, which is the PPFD times the minutes uh, or hours and times the seconds to get times the photo period and then divide it by this 1 million micro uh, moles per mole to get the kind of calculate at DLI. But I'll be going through this and giving you a easy math equation so you can apply it to your own situation. So when we're looking again at the outdoor location, uh, the PPFD in micromoles uh, per meter squared per second, the range is zero to 2000. And that would be no light to full sunlight. So full sunlight would be that 2000. But remember that sunlight is subjected to continual variability due to clouds passing by. And here we see the time of day at every 10 minute interval, taking a reading, we can see a cloud definitely came by here. And we can see getting closer to sunset here as the angle of the sun is changing. For artificial lighting, 500 micromoles uh, per meter squared per second should be considered the absolute minimum uh, to ensure when you're growing indoors, you want to be at least 510, really want to be higher than that. So what's, how does PPFD versus DLI, what's kind of the comparison here? Well, for PPFD, it's the rate of photons per second. The way to think about it is how fast is it raining per second? Is it kind of a light little drizzle or is it a downpour? DLI would be the sum of photons in a day. And that would be like asking the question, how much did it rain today? What's the total? So this is how we can compare these kind of point in time readings. Oh, it's raining a little, it's raining a lot, to kind of, oh, how much rain did we get today? That's how we compare PPFD versus DLI. Now, when we're looking at the target DLI, uh, daily light integral, this can vary with the stage of plant development. However, if a grower is able to keep all other plant requirements at the optimum, the DLA can be increased above these suggested levels to maximize production. Overall, yes, you want to probably have a little bit less light on your clones or newly emerged seedlings and increase that as it goes on. But if you think about an outdoor plant, man, as soon as that thing germinates, you're getting right into that full amount of sun. So um, we want to make sure we're reducing the stresses on those uh, plants. But if we want to maximize production, you use these kind of as a minimum. We can always increase them more, again, assuming you have all other plant requirements at optimum. For outdoor perspective on our DLI here, we kind of see a little bit of a kind of comparison here of the different months. Note that summer, uh, full sun days, DLA can reach 60 moles per meter squared per day. The image shows the amount of light received across the United States each month. During fall and winter, latitude has a strong influence on DLI. Again, the higher um, up you are versus the closer to the equator will greatly impact DLI. So to keep that in mind that you do have these variables, particularly when growing outdoors or growing in a greenhouse where you're dependent on some of the natural sun as well.
Now I said there would be calculations and helping you. Here's uh, an example of one. So a plant receiving 1,000 micromoles uh, per meter squared per second for 20 hours will have a DLI of how much? That's the question. So the answer is 72 moles uh, per meter squared per day. So keep in mind that we're running uh, lights. We're gonna keep this indoors to keep it a little bit easier at 1,000 micromoles per meter squared per second for 20 hours. So we start with the output, 1,000 micromoles per meter per second. We're looking at converting this to hours. So we have this many seconds in an hour. So we're able to cross our units out there. Then we wanna convert our micromoles to moles. So we get at this rate, we're producing 3.6 moles per meter squared per hour. So we take that 3.6 moles uh, per meter squared per hour and want to convert that to um, the days, uh, the moles per day, because we're running one day as 20 hours. So here's our moles. We have 20 hours in one day. That's allowing us to cancel the hours out. So we're simply left with 72 moles per meter squared per day. So again, how do we go about this? We take our output and our, we need our output and we need our time that they were run. Here's our output. We go through and we calculate this. And then we go through and we take that 3.6 moles per meter squared. We are running it for 20 hours. So that plant will have received 72 moles per meter squared per day. Let's look at another example. If we're running that same 1,000 micromoles per second, but now only for a 12 hour day or a flower cycle, how does this change? And of course, it would be less as we expect. And the answer is 43.2 moles. So we have our output in micromoles per meter squared per second. We want to convert this to moles uh, per hour, essentially. We go through these calculations. We're still producing the same 3.6 moles per meter squared per hour. If we flip back for just one second, we notice that the output is the same per hour. 3.6 moles, 3.6 moles. So how do we get this smaller number? Well, remember, we're only running this for 12 hours. So we take our 3.6 moles per meter squared per hour, multiply it now by a day is defined as 12 hours, and that's how we get the 43.2 moles uh, per meter squared per day for a DLI. Now, how does this light intensity relate to cannabis production? So we want to go back and circle back. Okay, we've got our DLI calculated. Is that good, bad, or indifferent? So at a certain point, in order for plants to take advantage of higher intensities of light, there needs to be carbon dioxide supplementation. If light is increased beyond this amount, the CO2 becomes a limiting factor and plants will not be able to use extra light levels, making it a waste to produce. Typically for indoor situation, you're paying for this light, so we want to make sure it's efficient. The threshold for optimum growth and photosynthesis is a DLI of 65 moles per day. Kind of see this kind of like kind of leveling off. Error bars here are at the 95% confidence interval for each treatment. We see our DLI and we see our yield here looking at different cannabis strains. So again, keep that in mind when you go through and calculate. That's great. Do a little comparison, really looking at that threshold of optimum being 65 per day. So light intensity during veg stage of cannabis uh, production. So since vegetative phases can have some variability due to the grower duration of light to dark to the maximums are provided below here. Notice that if you have lights that produce less intensity, they need to be run for a longer duration. While this is possible in the vegetative stage, the light duration is fixed in flower. So you wanna make sure you're getting high quality lights to particularly light and maximize that flower time. Light dark schedule and PPFD recommendation without CO2 enrichment. Looking at if you're running a 24 hour day, uh, I give some examples here to try to reach that 65 moles per day. Well, you better have lights that are producing at least 752 uh, micromoles per meter squared per second. If you're running an 18 6 schedule, you want to be at 900 micromoles, and still you're going to be closer to that 65, but you're only still going to be producing 58 moles per day to the plant. For a flowering photo period comparison, that 12-12 hour schedule at 900, here we were producing 58. Well, if we're only doing a 12 hour day, now we're only going to have a DLI of 39 moles. So keep that in mind. The light dark schedule and PPFD recommendations with CO2 enrichment to reach that target of that 65 moles per day. If you're running lights for 24 hours, you only need a light that would produce 752 micromoles. For if you're running at 18.6, you could uh, want a light that's producing just over a thousand micromoles. And for the flowering photo period, we need a light producing 1,505 micromoles per meter squared per second. So again, keep that in mind. Know what light intensity you're producing. Light intensity during flower phase of cannabis production. So that flowering phase is that critical flower phase. Uh, since it's defined only as a 12 hour of a continuous light duration uh, remains the same. What is variable is the intensity which impacts the light. 
So we're running for 12 hours, that's a constant. The minimum light level, PPFT of at least 510 micromoles uh, per meter squared per second. Optimum range without CO2 enrichment would be a PPFD of 800 to 1,000. Because remember, without CO2, max intensity that plants can use is no higher than 900 micromoles per second squared. So you're kind of like limited, capped at that level. However, if you are uh, enriching with your grow area with CO2, PPFD of 1,000 to 1,500 plus micromoles per meter squared per second can be used. Does not seem to be a saturation point even up to 1,800 micromoles per second. So you can theoretically go even higher than that. Keep in mind, natural sun would be 2,000. So anything higher than that, probably not going to get from indoor lighting or really at that point would probably be excessive because you're trying to determine where that light saturation point is. And yes, you could give your plants here 50 if without CO2, but you're going to be wasting that light because the plants are not able to utilize it because in that situation, they would be carbon dioxide limited. So here's just a general quick little summary reference chart, looking at the hours run, looking at the PPFD produced, and then kind of trying to get an idea of the DLI as a quick little comparison here, just to give you some idea. And this darker red region here would be over that 40. Again, we're shooting for that kind of 60, 65-ish range. So the information presented here, I want to thank a couple people uh, just to go through. And if you're interested in this and want to have uh, do some more further research, I recommend you kind of search up some of these names. So you might find some very interesting uh, publications, some very interesting articles, some very interesting research and data presented uh, to help you make, again, informed positions and ask good questions and to be able to understand this lighting to help you maximize your plant's yield.